Welcome back viewers to another episode of Namibia Beyond Borders. Namibia Beyond Borders is a youth program that focuses on the youth of Namibia that is in different countries. Today we have a little bit of a twist. We have two guests instead of one. We have Honito McNam in Barcelona and we have Kelly Maton which is residing in the Netherlands. Amsterdam to be specific. So I hope that you stay tuned and I hope you have your popcorn, your sweets and let's get on into it. My name is Juanito McNab. I am from Namibia and I am currently living in Barcelona uh, in Spain. And uh, I think I moved I moved to Europe last year, November, early December, late November, early December. And yeah, so I've been in, in, in Europe for the, the last six, seven months. Um, I was living in Geneva first, um, and then um, I moved here to Barcelona, Spain. I'm currently studying here. But as far as the culture and um, the environment and everything, everything has been so nice. Everything is so enjoyable. It's it's quite easy. Like I, I found the the transition quite easy. It's it's a warm culture, it's friendly people, so the, there's quite a few similarities in that sense with, with Namibia. So I didn't really struggle too much with any culture shocks or things like that. And I did, like I said, I did uh, grow up a few, a, f a few of my formative years where I was living in Paris. So I'm kind of more or less adjusted to the European way of living, if that makes sense. But yeah. Um, I'm currently, like I said, I'm currently studying here and I am planning to do so for the next couple of years and who knows, wherever that takes me, we'll see. So it's it's quite, it's quite nice to be able to like, just explore the city, to walk around and just to see the, the architecture and the layout of how everything is done and how easily, uh, um, accessible everything is to everyone and it's it's very nice it's it's something i really enjoy especially especially going for walks on the beach and skateboarding around the town because it's it's such a well designed city it's everything intertwines and connects if uh, uh so there's not like it's easy to get lost but it's also not easy to get lost because either way more or less everything's connected so you would you would find your way around it but google maps is definitely my best friend so far or has been my best friend so far just getting but i love exploring the city and just getting to see new places new new things there's always something to do keep yourself busy with so it's a it's a very nice place to to, to just live in and, and the the spanish way of living life i feel like so far from what i've seen and what i've experienced they're very chill people very like calm not not really doing too much so it's it's quite lovely and everybody like i said is super fr super friendly so you'll never really be hesitant to approach anybody or to ask questions or things like that but there are, is obviously the language barrier but so far right now i'm doing my best to, to um, learn Spanish. I mean, I, I do speak French, so mm, it's kind of more or less a bit like Catalan, which is also a language that they speak here. So in some places, in some situations, I do find myself understanding a few things, but mm, it's not really any similar to French. So that's definitely something that I still have to continue doing and continue getting used to. So just getting adjusted to that that language barrier and that struggle the commu communication struggle but yeah um in my spare time i just go to the beach with my friends we like i said we have so much to do here like we go to art exposés like free art exposés 
we go to museums, we just walk around town just doing, it doesn't really matter if we have anything to do, just walking around is something to do because you're seeing all the, the cool like historical buildings and stuff like that. So it's, I really can't recommend it enough for anybody that's considering even like thinking of moving here, I can't recommend it enough. Um, yeah, and I do have plans of, I mean, living here for, for the future. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, the residency process is a bit of a, a long hassle and a struggle, but so far, like, Everything has been lovely. Uh, so, and for every any Namibians that want to travel, I do like kind of have a few tips or at least from like my point of view, I do recommend you guys like always be early, whether it is at the airport, whether it's at the train station and stuff like that. These places can get very confusing and also like taking public transport and stuff like that. It's always better to go early to try to figure everything out, make sure you're going in the right direction, you're on the right train or you're this, this, that. And then also just be open, be respectful, like when you are in a new country, because it is the cultures and stuff are very different. So things tend to get a little bit weird or like just like things we would see at home, you wouldn't really see here or things you'd see here you wouldn't really necessarily see at home so it's always just about knowing that you are also in like a whole complete different setting and just accepting kind of that aspect of it as well but do like there's so much to do and so much to to see and enjoy so la last on the last note like i said i can't recommend it enough for anybody who wants to travel or who wants to come see spain or anything like that there's so so much to do and to see so don't be hesitant on doing it like just just traveling is the best is like the best way to to experience different things and to just meet new people from different cultures and just to get outside your comfort zone so i recommend that so yeah that's been me thank you Um, I'll do. Um, can you maybe help me out? I'm writing an article and I need some help. Do you know how to spell exaggerate? Yes, I can help with that. Uh, E-X-A-G-G-E-R-A-T-E. -E. Exaggerate. And you would have known this if you watch Straight Talk. Straight Talk is the smart youth show where the metal of primary school learners are tested in grueling spelling bees and the arguments of high school learners will be challenged and dismantled in rigorous debate. This year we start off with an Afrikaans spelling bee season. Phariseeisme, a hypocritische houding, vooral in morele contexte. F-A-R-I-S-E-I met de deelteken S- and later this year, we will assess the English spelling prowess of the learners. Next season, we will bring the burning political questions to schools all over the country for debate to show Namibia what the youth has to say. Never miss an episode every Tuesday at 5pm on NTV. Thanks, Aldu. Um, I really appreciate it, but uh, I need some more help, please. Can you help me spell another word? I, Zoe. Just watch Straight Talk every Tuesday at 5 on DSTV 285 and GoTV 25. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Mentorn and I'm 23 years old. I'm originally from the south of Namibia and I relocated to the north of Holland about a year and two months ago. About a year and three months ago. So what made settling down easier in the Netherlands for me was the fact that 
in the Netherlands we speak Dutch of course so Dutch is just and in back home we speak Afrikaans and Afrikaans is just another dialect of Dutch so it made learning Dutch easier for me and that's very crucial because in the Netherlands everything is Dutch everything is Dutch so and there's just some people that refuse to speak you refuse to speak English so you need to know you need to know Dutch to be able to settle down so my Afrikaans background really helped me learn Dutch easier and then something people always ask me is what is the thing I miss the most about Namibia and I always say of course I miss my family I miss my mom and I miss my siblings and my grandma but I miss the food the most and especially with weather like this like in the netherlands it's always cold it's always rainy no matter what the season is so when you come home from a long day you just want some good food some good home cooked food so <laughs> i miss the food the most and all of the students get my struggle all of the students get my struggle i miss the food definitely i miss the food the most so the main reason for me moving was to further my education and the, to further my education but to also just get a new perspective of the world and to just moving abroad really made me think bigger and it made me realize that there's no dream that's too big really there's no dream that's too big the sky is the limit and yeah it's really motivating honestly seeing so many big things around you is really motivating and yeah so of course moving to a new country comes with a lot of culture shocks and one culture shock that really hit me hard was the fact that the people in not just in the netherlands but people in europe are very independent everyone is in their own lane very independent nobody bothers anyone whereas in namibia we have a sense of community and warmth Whereas in Namibia we have a sense of community and warmth and friendliness and my, my grandma, my grandma is a church lady so she always taught me to greet everyone and that's the kind of attitude I came with when I moved here and I was humbled so quickly. People looked at me funny so, <laughs> so I don't greet strangers anymore but yeah that's something I really miss and then also the fact that the Dutch people are very blunt. The Dutch people are very blunt. They say they say it as it is. They don't sugarcoat anything. They give it to you straight. So sometimes it's difficult because when you've had a long day, you don't you don't want people to be straightforward and blunt with you. But yeah, it it also helped me be more straightforward as well because I used to sugarcoat things a lot. So now I'm very straightforward too and yeah and also yeah it's moving to a new country comes with a lot of culture shock a lot of adjustments that you need to make and yeah so i really love traveling whenever i have an opportunity to travel i grab it with both hands and i have visited a few places not as many as i hope to but i still have time but I've visited Paris a few times, I've been to Belgium, I've been to Belgium, I've been to Switzerland, I've been to Barcelona, which was a favorite of mine. I love Barcelona. I'm definitely going back. And Curacao. Curacao is also very beautiful. It's an island, very beautiful. So yeah. So what I like to do in my free time is I don't really have a lot of free time because I do work and study so when I have free time I love to hang out with my friends and we like to see as much as possible because the Netherlands is surrounded by a lot of small towns and cities around us and, and all of them have their own feel and vibe to them so we really like to see as much of them as possible and it feels like we're traveling, but we're not in fact traveling. So it's just really interesting. We love seeing new towns and cities. And they, we've been here well over a year, but there's still so much to see and there's just never enough time. So we really like to make an effort to see as much as possible. 
and we also love going to museums going to parks we really just love to be in each other's company yeah very beautiful and so my future plans is to definitely take what i've learned here and go home and give back to my country and impact my country positively but in my short-term goal is to complete my degree and gain work experience and hopefully work in the top organizations in my field and yeah just get work experience and but definitely in the long term i do want to give back to my country and implement what i've learned here yeah and yeah so my traveling tips to namibians would be first of all to go to the consulate website go to the consulate website and see and see sorry it's windy and see what what countries you are able to visit without a visa and then you can decide whether you want to go the visa route which is timely costly and there's also the fact that you could get rejected or if you could just if or if you want to go the route of just visiting a country that you don't need a visa for so then my second tip would be definitely to get someone that has gone through the process before to help you fill out the forms to just avoid any errors or mistakes yeah so that would be my two traveling tips so yeah my advice to aspiring Namibians would definitely be to dream big and think big and basically just follow your passions and your dreams whether it is to travel or to stay at home or combination of both just don't let your current circumstances limit your dreams and always think big the world is your oyster and don't let anyone tell you that your dreams are too big or that something's unrealistic because it's never unrealistic if other people can do it you can definitely do it so that's all from me thank you get ready for an exhilarating journey into the heart of namibian schools with generation c our show is all about celebrating gen c where every learner's voice is heard loud and clear picture this each school taking part in the my zone school project gets their very own dynamic 26 minute spotlight show packed with passion talent and undeniable spirit of the namibian youth but wait there's more. You can catch all the actions and inspiration on DSTV channel 285 and GoTV channel 25 every Thursday at 5 p.m. We are also on social media platforms at 2 p.m. So set your reminders and gather your friends and family for an unforgettable viewing experience. Dive into my zone socials for an exclusive behind the scenes content, interviews and more starting at 2 p.m. It's your chance to connect with the incredible individuals shaping the future of Namibia's education landscape. Don't miss out on the energy, the passion and the unstoppable spirit of Generation C. Tune in, join the conversation and be part of something truly special. Travel tip number one when traveling to the Netherlands. Learn to pronounce the places you're visiting. Dutch is a tough language and while you don't need to learn everything during your visit, one important Netherlands tip I have for you in terms of language is to at least learn how to pronounce the names you're visiting. Because while Dutch people can speak phenomenal English, one area where they struggle is understanding mispronounced version of Dutch places. Because well, they know how to say everything correctly. Be well aware of bike lanes. Although now moving on to more practical Netherlands travel tips when you arrive, this one may be the most important one on the list. Please, <laughs> for the love of go, be mindful of bike lanes. They're everywhere in the Netherlands because everybody 
and their mom rides bikes and it's very easy to accidentally walk on one if you're not used to them. Visiting for tulip season? Book a photo session at a special farm. If you plan to join the flower hungry army of tourists that descend upon the Netherlands every spring, then here's one important must how are special farms you can visit that are made specifically for photos. Why would you partake in something that's so shamelessly vain? Well, it may come as a shock, but regular tulip farmers don't take too kindly to strangers trampling their fields in search of photos. So, simply admiring fields from afar isn't quite the magical bucket list experience many hope for. So book, do not rent a bike if you're not confident on one. While most tourist guides will recommend renting a bike to experience the Netherlands like a local, uh, save yourself. As mentioned before, ducks, Dutch cyclists are on next level. They practically exit the womb on a bike. <laughs> Make sure to always have cash on you. Make sure that while card payments are widely accepted in the Netherlands these days, the Dutch tend to prefer using debit over credit. As such, you might have trouble paying on it with a credit card in some places, which is why I would recommend having cash on you just in case. Know the difference between coffee shops, cafes and brown bars. Now this is a must know for first time visitors. If you're drowsy and trying to caffeinate for the day, be careful where you go because coffee shop here does not mean what you think it does. Because this is where legal marijuana is sold. Sometimes they sell coffee too, but their main purpose is cash for hash. Don't forget there are also brown cafes or brown bars. This is cozy traditional pubs for enjoying a drink or two. Going to one is a must win in the Netherlands. Bring a jacket with a hood. If there's one thing Netherlands is, it's cold and random rains. So, but with vicious winds, Dutch rain can be brutal and the best defense is bring a solid jacket with a hood rather than in book tickets for big attractions well in advance. The Netherlands is an amazing country to visit for culture lovers with more museums and galleries than you could ever reasonably visit. The good news is there's plenty of cool attractions to enjoy. The bad news is you definitely won't be alone enjoying them. So, especially if you're visiting the Netherlands during peak seasons like spring and summer, make sure you book your must-see attractions in advance, especially big sites like Anne Frank House or, you know, Kicking Off a Garden. I studied medicine. I studied geology. I studied the Bachelor of Science. You start to heal people, touch patients, you touch lives, you save lives, you realize this is really what you want to do and you never get tired. Having graduated from the University of Namibia, I was able to open my own law firm and help people attend to their legal problems. Let's do the things that must be done and make it great. If you want to do it, just do it. That's what I wanted to do. So the sky is the limit. My unum, my pride. such a fun and exciting episode i've learned so much from both of my guests and i hope that next week's kids can live up to the hype but anyway guys see you next week mm -hmm.